uh, freezing or pausing. You're frozen. You're not in the camera at all. <sighs> it's a black and white picture. Do, 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 do. So, you can hear me, like always. Uh, if you're new to my channel, subscribe, <laughs> if you dare, because <laughs> I don't have perfect videos just yet. I don't know what's wrong. They just okay, the light came on now, but you're still not in the camera. Oh, now you are. You just popped in like you were a magician. Can you see me now? Yeah, you're not moving, though. You're just there. Are we serious? Yes. Do you oh. walk like an Egyptian again? Maybe that'll make it work. I don't know. Anyways, hi, I'm Tiffany. Welcome to my quilting life. Uh, obviously, I cannot control this. We could try a different device. I could resume from a different device. Do you want to try and do that? You gotta go get a different stand. Okay. Is there anybody on anyway? Yeah, say hi to everyone. Okay, well, I'll say hi while he goes and gets a different tripod. And we're gonna see if I can't resume from this device instead and hope that it is okay. Um, hi, Suburban. Hi, Kim. Hi, Paula. Hi, Zella, Judy, and Billy. Hello, guys. Welcome. The internet people were just here. The internet people were just here, so that is. For almost four hours. That's it. Like, this one's a close up, remember? All right, so if I'm out of the camera for a second, we're going to see if I can't resume on a different device. Give me two seconds, guys. We're going to attempt this. I'm telling the internet people are just here for almost four hours. Yep. So let's see how it works. All right, so. So far, it's not a astounding thumbs up. We're going to, give me two seconds. We're going to, this screen is going to pop off for a second. And this screen is going to pop off. On. Okay, I don't know why. It's not doing it. Give me two seconds. We're going to switch a setting real quick. <laughs> nope, nothing's working. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you. 45 bucks. That was actually what we had. So, no, it's not cheap. It should be working now. Weren't we paying like 60 something though for it instead? Okay, it price. should be sort of working now, hopefully. Open. But I um, yeah, honestly cannot right see myself. There we go. Okay, so it looks like it's working. I have a client quilt, I need to load it, I need to get it started and and quilted. So that's what I'm here to do, except you're just going to see the start to finish loading because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to load it because I hadn't done that part. So if you're new to my channel, I quilt on a King Quilter 2 Elite uh, special edition machine. Move the batting out of the way. We're Hi, Mary. The quilt's batting. First, I'm going to... Did you say hi to all these other people? No, I did not because I just need to get started on this or it's going to take forever. I thought you said hi while I went and got to stand. Oh, no, because I couldn't see. Oh, maybe I did. I don't know. Hi, June. Hello and welcome, everybody. There you go. Now you said hi to everyone. <laughs> all right, so... My quilt back is extremely larger than it needs to be. Yeah, you can see it moving around in the video too, it's funny. That was my son CJ, if you saw him come into camera. I was too dark and black that it looked like from oh. here. Alright, I'm just going to grab my yeah, pin. Even with all of our new lighting, it still looks very dark. Do you want me to hand you the pins so you don't drop them? Oh, it's probably because of all the new lighting. We have like every light on. And I'm going to find the center of my quilt oh, back. Some lights on me I can see some more. Which I pre-marked this It's time. much brighter. It comes in much brighter than it films. It's odd. And I am going to lay this on here nicely. Hi, Bernie. In hopes that this don't cause it to fall because it is kind of heavy. <coughs> Hi, Jim. And there it falls. Can you help me? I tell you this all the time, I can help you. It's going to all fall right now. Let me get a center pin in there. Right. 
So I'm going to pin this on here, at least starting pin right here, and then I got to readjust. Yeah, I was about to come up with about that. my center pin in. Now I just need to run along the one side, come back and do the other side. We'll see how long this takes me. You want me to stand here and hold this? No, let go. Well, it's going to fall. Oh, well. Be careful, but I'm just about to take the power for him. Mm, he's not. He was just after a second. He's not. He's not he's how is everybody ready. doing today? I have a headache, but I'm um, just working through it. Because why not? And there it goes. It's falling. I told you I'd stand over there. No, what? it's no big deal. <sighs> you can't put that up without putting the back the thing up. This is gonna fall. What thing? This. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Don't be mad at me. I'm sorry. Obviously, I can't see any questions or any talking because Scott is attempting to try to hold something that this is going to fall anyway. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. You don't want my help? I'll go sit over here. I just all saying hello. Good. Hello, everybody coming in. Yeah, I'm just the gym. pinning this on. And I have to hold nice and tight now because it wants to fall because this backing is a very heavy fabric. It's metallic. And metallic fabrics are actually heavier than regular quilt cotton. Hey, Billy. If you guys didn't know that, so there's a little secret to know. Billy says she thought it was me with the wig. <laughs> hey, Pepsi girl. Welcome, welcome. Here, Once Marla. I at least get this um, pinned on the back side, at least, then the top, the other side will go nice and easy. I just gotta pin this on real quick. Hey Zella. Hey Eric, Eric's on here. Hello. Haven't seen you in a while. Eric, how you doing? So I always pin my back. Ouch! That was a poke. From the back side. Hi Heather. Hopefully that one don't bleed because. Fabric is white with gray on it. <laughs> and I don't want to bleed on my client's stuff. I don't mind if I bleed on my cloth leaders, but not on my client's quilts. You guys can all see Tumper is uh, attempting to be annoying. Yep. He, ever since this has been in the house, he's all about it now. Yes, she is, Eric. What? Scolding me. You. Oh, get off, Thumb. Off. I can't kick it. Ouch. That hurt. Yes, you're getting thrown over to your spot. I know, it's terrible. <laughs> you have a spot and you don't have in it. Stay. No! <clears throat> this is you see the, the struggle today? Usually this doesn't happen, but this is very heavy fabric. Well, usually someone helps you. But you won't let me. But on a norm, this doesn't happen because the fabric is not this heavy on a normal basis. Hi, Katrina. Billy wants to know when you got out of the garage. Um, two months, a month ago? During my surgery. Right after my surgery. So like a month and a month. Exactly, almost. Get! Get! He's Does fighting. anybody else have cat problems with their long arms? He's fighting at ah. As long as he doesn't poke holes in his teeth. He's not fighting. He was daddy. fighting. He was fighting at it. He was a fighting. Okay, one side. Now, opposite direction. Riled up at the moment. He's the one hyper kitty kitty. 
He had his, he always gets riled up when he gets his hairball stuff. He had his hairball stuff. He played this maple flavor, it's really good stuff. He gets a kick out of it. He gets all hyper when he gets it. <clears throat> So, I don't know what to talk about all of a sudden. I'm like lost for words. Is that weird for me? Becca says hi, and she says that's a massive quilt. It's not massive. It's only, I think it's 76 by um, 89 or something like that. It's actually kind of small. The lady just makes her backing very, very large. And I'm loading it sideways, not up and down either. So when I'm ready to add the quilt, everything's getting loaded side to side instead of up and down. It doesn't have to go in the direction that the quilt is made. So if the quilt is like, say, 60 by 80, you can load it in the 80 by 60 way instead. So I'm loading this one in the 80 by, the, the 80 number is going to be going across the frame and the short will be going along the top or the roll-up. And you guys will see what I do with oversized quilts, how I put them on here. Ouch, dang it. I'm a really poking myself today. And the whole thing is falling. <laughs> Zella says, my cat thinks she is a quilt there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we, for the, a couple days, we could not find Thumper, could not find Thumper. Wondering where Thumper is hiding, his new hiding spot. Well, I did that practice um, quilt piece that I made, just fabric or whatever, and it was loaded. Well, I unloaded it, and it's still usable because there's still space left on it. And I have it folded right here on the floor, directly behind everything. Thumper made himself a bed inside the fold of it. He opened it up and put himself inside of it. <laughs> so that's his new hiding spot. Yep, took me two, three days to figure it out. Today I finally tracked him down where he was. <laughs> Becca says, ignore the vibrating. and it's me talking to you on Marco Polo. <laughs> oh, okay. I said I was going live, so that's fine. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Dan. I always forget to turn my notifications off anyway when... <laughs> when I use my phone for this, for the um, live streaming, I always, always forget. So if you guys get any kind of vibrating, because I don't have the volume on, I just use the vibrating thing. So if any kind of vibrating happens, that's because my phone is, somebody's trying to call or text or something. Beck is asking how big your frame is. 12 foot. Oh, for those that are curious, it's a King Quilter 2 Elite Special Edition on a, it's an 18 inch machine on a 12 foot frame. All right, now to come to the front side. Hi Diane, Diane asks, are you feeling better, Tiffany? I still have a headache, but I'll Donna, sorry, not Diane. I'm just oh. gonna put this center on here. I didn't mean to interrupt you, what were you sending that? Who, me? Yes, you, I got your name wrong, I had to correct myself. I said I still have a headache, but it's not horrible. I'm still managing through it. <laughs> Bernie says, I love your, your cat. He is so cute the way he covers up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why don't you tell him about our internet now that we got 40 some people on here? Oh, yeah, we had internet problems again, and it kind of sucks, like it always has. So they're trying to fix it for us to where, because they know I'm a YouTuber and I need the best of the best. So what they're thinking is putting in a, um, a different box because the newer box doesn't run with, we don't have the newest of the new phones and computers and tablets. So they're thinking about putting in a different box that still gets good internet, but will at least run our devices, what our devices actually put out. The new one doesn't because our devices don't put out enough sh signal for the, the internet to send to or whatever. So hopefully maybe if they do that, it might change and I'll have a better, um, internet 
quality with my videos. In other words, they're giving us an old box because none of our devices are new enough for the new box. So they're hoping the old box will work better with all of our devices since all of our devices are old. And we don't want to buy all brand new devices. They're talking even TVs and everything. They're saying you got to buy brand new TVs and brand new this and brand new that. And we don't have the money for that. So they're going to put in an old box to run older devices. So hopefully that changes things with my YouTube once they do that, and I'll have better videos. And Heather's telling you that her cat Misty does that all the time. What? Screws with the quote? Yes. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I think Diane, Diane didn't get her notification. She just popped on for a second. Yeah. So you were on. This uh, client has a dog, so that could also be another thing. That my cat is smelling her oh, dog yes, so on the fabric. That. Maybe that's what's driving him around. Because this client has a dog. Well, and he he's gets... never been around other animals. Well, he has, but if their scent is here, he'll freak out and go crazy. And he gets riled up when I come over from Leroy's after petting his dogs. He gets mad at me if I have their scent on me. Oh, hi, Kay. Kay says hi. Hello. Welcome, welcome. You're getting me loading today because I didn't get a chance to do anything to start, so I figured I'll just do all the work off on camera. <laughs> that way I'm not on too late and you guys still get to see me. Ouch! Damn it! <clears throat> still during the day light hours, or at least before bedtime, because it's probably like 10 o'clock on the East Coast by now. How many times did you stab yourself now, my love? Four. I don't know why I always poke myself, I'm just a... Why don't you wear a thimble? No, that won't work. Unless it's like a rubber one. Well, if they have metal ones, I don't know how that would be... I don't be know how that will help me pin. Uh, it'll help you stop poking yourself, because it'll poke the thimble. Mm. And protect your finger. Then I need to wear it on all fingers, because I use all my fingers to do this. <laughs> Becca says, that's it. I'm sending you red snap leaders. <laughs> this is taking too long. <laughs> or is it my fault? You stab yourself four times. I stab myself all the time. But I do have shaky hands. My hands aren't like the perfect kind of hands. So I, I don't know. They just sh shake and shiver. So, so sometimes I can't tell where I'm going or what I'm doing, you know, as I'm doing it. Because my hands shake. Okay, we've got an actual real question here. Eric wants to know what type of batting do you use? Anything that I can. This quilt is getting a white 100% cotton batting. But that's because that's what the lady brought. That's my, my clients bring me their batting when they want something specific or else if they want it, they get the... Um, the polyester that I use, the, well, the stuff that I have on in... On what I would call in stock, <laughs> what we have in the garage. <laughs> but most of them want what they want in it. So some people get 80 20, some people bring me 100% cotton, some people bring me whatever. Some of my clients supply their whole entire roll. So I use whatever is available. So that says I was pressing blocks today and putting them in a box, and my cat got in the box. <laughs> <laughs> Thumper's done that in my room. Like Jim says before, and our daughter always says, to him, if it fits, I sit. Yeah, what the cat says. And yet Becca says, no, I don't like you getting stabbed. You have enough to deal with. All and right, she so. says, you helped me out so much on my lives, I'm going to help you out this one thing. With this one thing. Awesome sauce. Well, thank That's you, very Becca. kind of you, Becca. Thank All right, you. so now I'm going to roll it onto this and I don't have I know you guys have seen it on some frames they have a roller on both mine broke off so I don't have a roller on mine so I just do it by hand but a lot of long arms have the rollers on the end and I have not really noticed the difference with or without the roller because the bar spins either way when it's disconnected And I just walk back and forth. I get all my exercise in. I get all my steps in for the day, you know, because I'm so lazy. I lay in bed all day. You're all like an Egyptian again. 
They, they don't miss that. You did it at the beginning. I was I was walking like an Egyptian. <laughs> Pepsi girl got her prize on Tuesday. Awesome. Or today, yeah, that's today. So I just make sure that it stays on the ends really nice and it's rolling well, she says up. Easter Tuesday. That would be last Tuesday. Oh. I don't know. She got her prize either way. Awesome. I also make sure that there's no threads getting rolled up into it because then they end up getting quilted permanently in the back. And this is white fabric, so I watch out for those because sometimes a dark thread can get behind it and you can see it. Now I'm coming hi, Judy. up. Hi, Judy. Judy says hi. Hello. I'm coming up to the seam, which I have pressed open. I just use my hands to flatten it out. Eric says, well, do you mean the ratchet? Yeah, I don't have any of those. The ratchet is there, but it doesn't have a, a, a circle-y thing. It doesn't have, hold on, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I don't have these. Can you see that in the camera? I don't have these on the end because they break. They're plastic on a metal frame, so they break off. So there's no point in having it. Well, Becca says she ordered red snack leaders. They're on the way. I paid for two days shipping, so hopefully you'll have them this week. Oh, Good what? Lord. Good Lord, Becca, you don't have to spoil us here. All right, so I'm going to pull the last of these but thank threads you. off. I'm sure she will love it. I'm going to sort of kind of tighten it just a little bit. Hi, like Joyce. That. I'm going to put my clamps on the end. Hi, Vicki. It's snowing there, Vicki says. Really? Yeah, Eric says his broke too. Yep, they break so easily. I don't care what fancy machine you buy. They are all these frames are made with metal hooked to plastic. So I would just bypass them every time. Okay, so I'm just adding my clamps to tighten the whole entire thing out. It gets rid of all the wrinkles and any folds. I don't pull too tight on it. I make sure they're just sort of tight so I have a little bit of a bounce. Now for some batting. I can remember which way I decided to load it. And I'm going to make sure that the batting is going um, pucker sight. I can't show you guys this. This is something you'll have to see. When you buy cotton batting, it's poked. It's like got needle pokes through it. So one side of your cotton batting is smooth. The other side has little divots, little like tiny, tiny little divots completely over it. In person, you can see it go divot side down because that's the way it was needle punched. Hi, Amaze Crafted. Yes, all of the clients know we have thumper. Yes. And they are okay with it now that this long arm is in the house. Before the long arm was in the house, they, um, that my quilts were all 100% pet free. Now they're not. <laughs> I just kick it underneath because I don't need it. And I don't keep anything under my frame except over here in this corner. Yes, this lady has a dog. I do not base my batting ever unless it's like, you know, an absolute necessity, which it is not. I just flatten it out. Lizette asks, have you gotten a glide foot yet? Nope. Soon though, soon. Is that that expensive one that I yep. have it for you? Yeah, I have to look it up again. Last time they I looked it up have for it was that they were sold out. They didn't have it in stock. I was going to buy her one. That was a while ago, though. I'll so now I'm again. loading the quilt, and I'm loading it mostly to that side, to my um, right-hand side. And this is in length form, so the 80 inches is going this way. And this is a, a mixture of batiks and regular cotton on this. And then... Jim says, why do they put plastic and metal together? It's beyond me. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't understand, understand it either. either. So dumb, so dumb. 
All right, I gotta adjust it down this way just a little bit more. Sarah so says, "I'm glad she's happy to happy to help out a bit." Um, well, thank you, Becca. But I'll talk to you later anyway, so I don't have to go into it all from here. All right, so I'm gonna flatten it out nicely. Make sure there's no wrinkle, wrinkles or anything. So this is my client's quilt, isn't it beautiful? They're all liking the info about the batting direction. Becca and Lizette both commented. Okay. So. Are you asked, are you floating the batting? I'm floating the batting and the quilt top. That's I don't do anything else. Um, I just float everything and then I kick it out of the way like that when I know it's good. I also stand here at the end and I look to see if I have a straight line with the quilt top and it looks like I need to shift just a little. Okay, so that's a pretty quilt. And then I also look for like markers on a quilt top, especially when they're my client's quilts. With mine, I'm not really whatever, but with client's quilts, any kind of straight line or seam that goes up and down, those are my markers. So here I have a seam right here. So it is sitting in the same exact position all the way across. It kind of looks like it's bowing a little bit right here, but when I tighten it down, it should be fine. But it looks like it's in the same position. And those are the markers I look for to make sure that they're nice and straight the whole entire way. And then again, I check this end, then I'll pop. Let me do that. Does that hurt your hand? That. Or not. Tighten it down. Oh, shoot. And then we're going to roll some bobbins because I totally did not do that part. While you're doing that, Becca wants to know if you're going to start doing a customer quilt year round or that it's in the garage. Yes. Or now that it's not Yes, in the all year round. Yep, no more taking breaks in the summertime. So I need to choose a thread color and I was tossed between two colors earlier. Hmm. And she says, of course you will. <laughs> I was tossed between two thread colors earlier, so I have, I don't want to use white and I don't want to use black. So I was thinking, where's the grip? There it is. Hey, should I hold it up closer to them? Today? No, you can come, we can come in now. I'm loaded. Okay, well that's what I was asking. Do you want me to bring the camera in? I just going to ask that too. Hi guys, close up, yeah? <laughs> All right, so. I was thinking this cool gray three, but I'm gonna have to look now because I don't wanna do any thread color swapping. <laughs> Diane says, yep, she can, and no bugs to bite anymore. <laughs> uh, nope, no more scorpions running at my feet and centipedes and stuff like that. And then I also have this steel blue color, and I thought that it would look good too because it kind of blends nicely and i just look to see which one looks the best eric says i vote gray looks, the gray looks really good well they're not that close enough i don't know if i should zoom it in to for them to really see it's kind of hard for them to tell i like the gray i also know information about this quilt this quilt was made for a granddaughter who finally got her first apartment so this is her first quilt for her first apartment I'm going to go with the gray, but I'm also going to check. Lizette's um, wondering what kind of pattern you're cool doing. Cool gray seven. I am going to actually do a ribbon, an edge to edge ribbon. Yeah, I know. You're like, what? What's an edge to edge ribbon? I'm going to do an edge to edge ribbon. It's actually quite simple. It's just a meander gone over twice. Dan says I like the gray too. Well, the color must be showing up quite well for them. <laughs> right. Light gray it is because this darker one is kind of dark. Yes, the back is a white with a checker. Gray checker, not gray checkers, checker. uh, plus signs. Oh, they are plus signs, yeah. Yep. I was looking right now. All right, we're going to go with this gray, and I'm hoping I already have some bobbins wound so I can just get started. Well, just do one and then get started. No, mm -hmm. Oh, no, you can't. You need to can't. thread. You need to thread. Yep, nope, I have some wound right here. I have enough, I'm pretty sure. That's why we wind ahead. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's Hi, Shirley. The same color. Yep, that's the same color. And I'm hoping that that looks good. Oh, yeah, that'll be fine on the back. All right. Good night, Judy. Put 
put that there for now. Shirley says it's a long time she missed everyone. Oh, we were this at the way. Walmart. We forgot to look for a little trash. So I'm going to show you guys. Put the camera up here so they can see. Oops. Good Don't problem. break things now, my love. Do you need me to move nope. something? All right. So I'm going to thread it by doing this. I have like this really, really long thread hanging off. And my original last color thread is still sitting in here. So what I'm going to do instead of having to re-thread the whole entire machine is I'm going to tie them together and make a knot. These are way too long. So I'm going to tie them together and make a knot back here while I'm standing here. You can do it from the front side if you so darn please, but I'm going to make a knot. Eric's wondering how long it's going to take you to quilt this quilt. Um, hopefully I can get most of it done in a video. We'll see. I might have to take a break, but we'll see. All right, so I just tied a knot and then from the front side, I just pull it all the way through, and my machine is now threaded, just like that. Well, for those of you that didn't see the 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 quilt train, the fabric train got done in two different videos, but that's because she had to stop and take a break, or else she would have done it all in one yeah. video. And that was my a pretty wrist, big quilt. My wrist didn't want to keep going in the last one. All right, I'm in front of the camera now. Not really. Oh, okay. So what I'm going to do now is pop a bobbin in and baste the quilt. Where did I stick my bobbin case? I leave it back there? wouldn't know. Do you want me to go back there and look? Nope, I found it. So Where I'm do you want the camera now? A bobbin in. Are we going to put it on the Yeah, machine? I'm going to put it on the mount. Okay. I'm going to reach down under there and just stick it in the hole until I feel it with my fingers. I'm going to baste the top of this quilt so that it doesn't move or shift while I start quilting. And I'm totally blocking the camera, but we're going to take you guys to the regular mount in a second. <laughs> and Eric says, slow's not in your dictionary. <laughs> Billy asks how your wrists are doing. My wrist is okay-ish. I'm not really, I did some cutting today to try to get myself on the track where I need to be so I could start um, clients start to finish quilts. Marla says that's how she threads her four thread serger, tie them off and pull them through. Yeah, I would too on a serger. Sergers have gotta be hard as heck to thread. I watched a video of somebody trying to thread it. She was all using like uh, tweezers and pliers and all sorts of funkiness. <laughs> Definitely need a lot for a surgery. I just pulled through on this. Alright, so now I've made it to the other end. I'm just going to adjust, pat it out. Everything's nice and flat. Uh, Kay wants to know if you think the surgery helped. I don't know yet, but I don't have any pain from pre-surgery. That makes any sense. And yes, I am double basting the top right now. There's the beast. He's calmed down now. The right side. <laughs> Marla says, yep, Tiff, pleasers, twires, <laughs> pliers, and a lot of curse words. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to get a serger because I like, you know, um, I've been interested in making dresses for myself because I like dresses, but I haven't got it yet because one, it's expensive, and two, the threading of it. I'm like scared. I'm like, what? If, I un if it gets unthreaded somehow, that's going to like screw my brain up. All right, we're going to switch to the mount now. So, we're going to shake a little bit, so if you get motion sick, just look away. Look away! Alright, we're going to go into the other mount. If I can pull the lever. Ta-da! I'm going to come over this way some. Okay. 
There we go. Now I'm gonna de ring de what is it called? Uh, make it from shaking. And I'm also going to check my battery and then detach you guys from the charger. Because I cannot quilt with you hooked to a cord. Alright, so what I'm going to do, this is so simple, a beginner can do this. But seriously, if you can meander, then you'll be able to do this whole entire edge-to-edge -edge ribbon. So I have my machine at 10 stitches per inch in precision mode. The reason for that is because it's going to keep me from going too fast and I'm going to have nice beautiful even stitches because this is a client quilt and that's pretty much the easiest uh, precision mode is the best for me to use, you know. So I get 10 stitches per inch, it's regulated and I don't have to worry about any problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to meander from my right or my left side to my right side. When I get to my right side, I'm going to re-come back to my left side. And you guys are going to be hopefully be able to see it most of the time that it's in dark color, at least. And um, you'll see. It looks really cool. And it's a wider meander. This isn't really tight or close stitching. This is a wider stitch. So here we go. So you can see I'm literally really wide. Like I said, this is something a beginner can do. This client doesn't like heavy stitching. That is why I chose to do this. Plus I wanted to take away from all the squareness of this quilt. something like that. I don't want too many straight lines. I want more wiggles than anything from one side to the other. Okay, so I've now made it to the other side. Here is the part that people are gonna, let's say they'll get confused at. Can I have that please? Yes. All right, never mind, never mind, never mind. Um, the part where people will get confused is now we're going to go from this side right back over all this to the other side. But what I'm going to so do, I'm not rolling? no, oh, I'm going to alternate myself. So I'm going to start out right here 
and I'm going to go down, I'm going to cross over to the outside of that one, come back in, go to the outside, come back in, and it's going to look like a ribbon. So let's see how well or how slow I can do this to make sure it comes out right, but you'll see right now. So it's going to look like a ribbon. Oh, that's awesome. So you just follow yourself back around, making yourself go in and out of what you just did. Watch yourself. Don't go too far out, but don't go too light either. Just crossing over. Can you guys see what I'm doing here now? So cool. So we're just creating ribbon. heavily quilted, it's nice and light, so my clients will be super happy and thrilled. It says that looks awesome. So pretty much I'm re-meandering in and out of my original meander. So you just got to watch where you were and where you're going. says, oh, I get it now, Jeff. And Billy says, love it. Okay, says, so that's cool. And you can make it wider if you wanted, you know. I'm trying to stay consistent with my width of my ribbons, though. So that they look good but you can do a tighter one like i said this client likes lighter quilting so i'm doing a more wider start you know you just have to go like i said i should be able to quilt this all in one video well, let's just go try that so i just says i think i see flames trailing the needle <laughs> Going so fast. I'm not really going that fast at all today. It has some beat there. Zella says, I love watching you quilt. Thank you, Zella. That's awesome. So let me take it off the um, mount so that I can run down the whole, actually I'll just leave it on the mount and slowly go across the quilt so that you guys can see. It is just looks like ribbon, just waving ribbon down the whole entire thing. And look how quick, easy, and simple that is. It covers everything that needs to be held down. It holds all three layers together. There is no more than four inches of space in between all of the quilting, you know, because some batting say no more than four inches or whatever, you know. So it's completely and utterly crossed over, and it's definitely a dramatic result and such simple, simple quilting. So 
which makes it super fun. So it just goes through the whole entire thing very nicely, super simple. Heather says, I love to hear the laughter from both of you. I am always <laughs> on my own here, no family or friends anywhere. Aww. Well, we're here for you, Heather. So you can see, like in some areas, yes, I kind of went too far, but you know what? It still looks like ribbon. It doesn't look horrible. And the whole entire thing, was, just this pass was quilted that quick. So now I'm going to roll it up and I'm going to completely do the whole entire process all over again, except my original meandering will um, change every time. It's not going to go from the same direction. It never comes from the same spot. I will roll. Stop. Well, I'm going to stop you in a certain spot because I'm making yeah, sure. Yeah, tell me when to stop. Keep going. Right there. Tighten this up. So all I'm going to do now is use my hand to flatten everything out, put my clamps back on the dumb side of here. Kim says it's totally awesome. I love watching you. Jim says I love it. All right, everything's nice and flat. This is a very flat quilt to begin with, so. Joyce says she's on her own, too. All we'll right, so I'm going to baste this side now. When you get bored, come hang out with us. If we're on. Keeps it nice and tight. No shifting. And the, the keeps the quilt nice and square. Donna says that looks neat. Diane says I love it. A nice feminine touch. Yes. Well, it it's, for, it's for a girl, so... Billy says, I learned so much from you, Tiff. Okay, I'm going to go to the other side. If you get dizzy in the fast motion of that, sorry about that. but I... There you go, Bernie. That's nice. You and Heather can sew together. That's cool. Lizette says, um, I'll definitely practice that design. Yes, this one is the simplest. I think out of all anything available for quilting, because this is a wide meander, you know, I think it 100%... Um, makes it simple to do and then you're just going right back over it and it doesn't matter you could screw up as many times as you want but you're going back over it you know both directions either way here's a question for you hmm. eric wants to know how do you deal with wavy borders wavy borders i sometimes fold them and create new seams that nobody will even know are there um i quilt them out or i stretch and pull the fabric or i iron and starch with the cordless iron while it's on the frame and before i had the cordless iron i did it on the frame as well just with a corded iron squeak was usually the one that took care of that when he was in the garage oh my buddy squeak he's the man all right so now i'm just going to do the same thing i'm going to meander my way to the other side june says awesome job and then make my way right back over all that quilting cool again. So, here we go. Good. You can make it more wavier if you wanted to, the um, meandering. Or have more curves or what have you. I just do this. Make my way around. Make my machine beep, you know. Making my way around. Covering as much ground as possible.
I need a squeak to take care of my employees anymore. In fact, everybody needs squeak air. He definitely knows how to get her done. Right. And Eric told Marla, make room, I'm bringing two bottles over and joining you. <laughs> Bernie wants to know if you're binding this one. Uh, no. Some clients have me bind and some do not. This one has, this one does it herself because she can bind. Mama says my meandering on my domestic always ends up too small. I gotta get bigger. That's because our hand space when we're on our domestic machine is much smaller than our hand space when we're on the long arm. So that is why when you're on a domestic, it's harder on the domestic to have a wide meander because your hand space is only so big on your table when you're free motion quilting it. So instead on your free motion quilting, you're gonna take big leaps and bounds instead of little leaps and bounds. You're gonna just go big motions, readjust, big motions, readjust. <clears throat> All right, now I'm gonna go back the other way and just, again, same thing as before. I'm gonna cross over and follow my thread and create ribbon. Well, this is nice. So she works that iron until it squeaks and then she works the iron some more. <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys crack me up. Bernie Heather's in Queensland, Australia, I do believe. I know she's in Australia, pretty sure it's cool. part I slow down for because I have to watch where I'm stitching and make sure I'm not going too far off the grid I created myself. Poor best result. on the sides and what I'm quilting on the quilt. This quilt, this quilt will take an hour. And some quilts take you months. Some quilts take up to 16 days I've had a quilt on the frame working on it every day. But that was all custom. Usually edge to edge stuff that's like 80 by 80 just as an example, it can take me two to six hours. Depends, depends on what I'm quilting on it. This is simple enough I can have done tonight while on this live stream, hopefully. Of bobbins. Let me change out the bobbin real quick. I'm just going to reach under there, grab it out, change it out to another one. Eric said the sound is coming funky. The sound is funky? Is it the machine, Eric, or just us? Do we sound funky? The machine might sound weird when it starts running out of bobbin, too. It does that every once in a while. It makes a weird sound. Yes, Suburban, the phone was vibrating, the thingy fell out. We're going to fix it now. Oh, that's probably the funky sound then. I didn't realize that. It won't fall or break, don't worry. It's just, it has a little pad thing so it doesn't vibrate against it. I have the a piece of flannel that rolls up against yeah, the... That could have been the sound you're hearing. Yep, Deborah says it's a vibrating yep. noise. That's probably what it is. It vibrated because I got a notification then. Yep. All right, let me just tighten this back up. There we go.
Ta da. Okay. My bobbin is in there. I'm just going to drop my thread, pull up my bobbin. Hey, Auntie Anne. She didn't realize you were on. Well, you Tie it one. off. Take a couple stitches on it and then continue on with my sewing. But before Good I keep going, girl. good night. If you guys have to leave because I know it's later in um, other countries and on the um, East Coast, you don't have to stay. I understand completely. Good night, Kay. All right. help you guys not spend so much money by coming on when they're on when I don't have money to spend anyway. There we go. So next is down. Let's go to another row. Oh, like I got said. new glasses today. Yep. I told you that earlier, didn't I? Not that I know of. I don't know. I was teasing you in camera earlier, so I wasn't paying attention. All right, so probably like four more, three, four, yeah, about four more passes, and this will be done. It goes pretty quick. I mean, the machine has only ran so far for 17 minutes, and I'm already got two passes down. I'm going to come over and make your hand. Right there. Stop. Right there. Okay. No, I have to shift that, it anyway. Does that matter? Okay, that doesn't matter now? Nope. With me doing this? Nope. Okay. Is that too tight? Is that good? No, it's perfect. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to baste the sides after I flatten everything out. I use my hands and I just flatten it out, the batting and the quilt top and so on and so forth. Come over here, making sure everything is staying nice and square. <laughs> Kim says I should have paid attention. I guess so. Nice and square. Everything's Later. good. I'm also like reaching the seam because it's now making it, the backing seam is now making its debut sort of. <clears throat> and so I can see it now, making sure that the seam stays nice. Auntie Ann says it sounds like this hand is getting way better. She's getting speed back. Um, this really isn't requiring much movement or flick of the wrist. Um, the little intricate stuff I still can't do very well yet, but I have started using a rotary cutter So that's a plus. I just am not ready to cut through more than one layer at a time, which kind of sucks But It'll get there. I'm hoping by um, Next Monday or so that I'll be 100% back to normal and hopefully Tomorrow you guys will get an announcement from me for when I'm ready to my reason for starting back up Monday Before you get off, Bernie, where are you at? Heather wants to know. She probably already left. Some people just say they're leaving and they leave. Well, she asked earlier where Heather was. She didn't know where Bernie was. She asked where Bernie was. Bernie just said she's getting off. Oh. Uh -huh. Oh, she's in Virginia. Aha. Uh -huh. 
Marilita says it looks great. And good night. Good night, Marilita. Okay. Hello, Cecil. Cecil says hello. Hello. Welcome. All right, so I'm going to go now back the other she direction. She wants to know real quick hmm. before you start going, she wants to know what your quilt pattern is called. It is a ribbon. It is just a meandering ribbon. It's a very wide meandering ribbon. So you'll see right now as I'm quilting it again, I'll explain it as I go. I meander really widely from one side to the other. And when I get to the left side from the right, I go right back over and keep crisscrossing over my stitches and you'll see. So I'm now on my next pass. And like I said, I probably have three more after this. has a stain on her quilt. I don't like, sometimes I fully inspect my client quilts when they drop them off and then there's other times where they're always here so I like tell them when they just come to pick it up, hey I noticed you didn't have that seam sewn in or this had a little rip. They usually don't care but I usually fix it from the long arm anyway. Stop right here for a second. I hate when there's um, thread sticking out of the seams. I am doing lots of wiggling. I'm not making these lines straight as I make my way from one side to the other. There is, you mean on the quilt or what I'm doing? She says not the quilt as well. Not the quilt? Yeah, your pattern. The, this is a ribbon. ribbon. This is just an, an edge to edge ribbon meander. I don't know if there's any other name for it. Marla says, my husband thinks I'm crazy to play as they're watching this, but it's very relaxing to me to watch this quilt. That's awesome, Marla. Thanks. Well, I watch people quilt too, and I'm I used to think Tiff was crazy for Lena watching it, but now I'm used to her doing it. When we watch movies together, she's always watching somebody okay. with an earbud in one ear. Yep. <clears throat> so now I'm going to go from back from this side to the other side. So I'm just going to be crossing over like this. I'm going to try to go slow so you can see. So I'm just crossing over, creating the look of ribbon. I don't know how long I can keep up going this slow, but... I don't know. It looks patch. like a disappearing with nine patch with satching, yeah. It's also good to do this with a thread that you can see on the quilt. If I would have went with like 
a different color, I would not have been able to see the thread if it would have blended more. So I wouldn't be able to see going back the opposite direction. So it's a good thing I have a color that kind of stands out, but you can kind of see. part that makes this go fast is the fact that you don't have to stop when you get to one end. You can just start going in the opposite direction right away. Hi Jaden. Jaden says pretty colors. Yep. Hi Delilah. Hello, hello everybody coming in and goodbye to those that are leaving. Like I said, it goes quick, it goes very quick. So for those that are joining, let it so that you can let that idea soak into your head. That just what creates a ribbon. Get put your hands behind the back. They are behind the back. I see. That's why I said that. I'm scratching my back though because my back itches. Right. A little bit more. Right there. Stop. Stop here. Does that matter? Oh, uh, no, it doesn't matter. That's not in the quilting section anyway. Okay, I'm pulling the bottom. Uh -huh. Is that tight? Good? Is that good? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to, again, adjust my quilt top, my batting, and just flatten it all out. I'm going to bring the machine with me so that I can base this side now that I'm at it. So I'm just making sure everything stays flat. The good thing about cotton batting is it really doesn't get kinked up under the quilt unlike my polyester that does sometimes. Mm. Oh, thank you, Heather. Thank you, Heather. That's very kind of you. <clears throat> you just sent us some fabric, though. You don't have to spoil us too much. All right, so I'm going to just base Holy this awesome. side. I do that so that I can keep the quilt super square. It's a client quilt, so i got to make sure 100% that it stays square the whole entire time. Hi, Della. Della says I'm a bit late to the quilting party. I like oh, that. that's fine. The quilting party. <laughs> I always double base, so I go down and then back up again, or up and then back down again. It just depends on my mood, I guess. And then I go to the other side. Watch out for those dizzy mines that get dizzy when it goes too fast from one side to the other. Again, I'm going to make sure everything stayed flat after basting it. Come over to this side, baste it, and then start. Teresa says I would look at some stars if you were doing a quilt 
invalid. Yes, it would. And I don't have, I don't know how to do stars yet. I mean, I do, but they have to be crossover. I can't do um, open stars. I have to do crossovers. <laughs> That's okay, though. I'm learning. All right, so I'll put my needle down. I'm going to adjust this. The batting is like 10 times too big. That's okay. We all learn in still. That's what this is about. Yeah. Learning, quoting stuff, and learning new things, and trying right. new things. Here we go. So now I'm going to go wide stitch in precision mode from this side to the other again. Everything that I own quilting related has some sort of a uh, talk back to me. <laughs> this isn't even fast for normal. Normally it beeps every two seconds. And my, my manual mode, I haven't found a percentage that I can quilt at with even stitches for as fast as I can quilt. So that's why I always just keep it, especially for client quilts, I keep it in precision so that I'm always stitching 10 stitches per inch because it's my clients and well, yeah. We don't want my client quilts all funky and wonky. Quilting. Now that I'm on this side, I'm going to go back the opposite direction now. So I quilted from left to right, and now I'm going from right to left right over my stitching. I'm trying to keep it as uniform as possible. Sometimes I get a little too happy and go too fast. And then I end up more than a half inch or so away from my previous stitch line, which doesn't look like ribbon when it goes that far. And it sounds like I'm going to be out of bobbin soon.
good idea, Diane. You can get with somebody and invent that. They actually, you know those big, huge, I don't know all you guys out there. There is a long arm that is humongous. It's a big, huge square with a tower that runs along the top. And then it's a big tray that goes, you slide, you know, you clamp your quilt to it and then you slide it across and in. Well, those long arms also take a bobbin, which I would have thought was, you know, weird because it's so huge and enormous. I think you can find those uh, machines, those big huge machines for industrial quilting services at Lancaster Quilt um, of, of Pennsylvania. And um, those things are enormous. And when I first saw one, I thought, well, how is there, you know, how's the thread coming from the bottom? Because it's a machine thing that runs over the top, but there's no throat. It's just a, on a long tower. And yeah, it's, it still has a bobbin too. I thought that that was kind of strange for such a big, huge industrial machine that it wasn't running off of um, two spools or cones of thread. All right, so about hi, one, Kelly, I'm gonna do a half a pass, I think. She says, hi, I just joined. How do you decide what motifs or pattern to quilt? I just, um, I think about it sometimes. It takes me a bit to think about what I wanna put on somebody's quilt. But then there are times that I'm like thinking to myself, hey, I know what that needs feathers right away. I know, you know. All right, stop right there. We're going to do a half a pass because it's ending on a not so, um, not so full pass. So here is a wrinkle and a pucker coming up because it's a batik hooked with quilting cotton. So as you guys can see, if I was to keep this straight, I actually have a, um, a fold right here. So I'm going to adjust this and work my magic in. I'm going to straighten everything and pull it and I'm just going to work that in. I don't have my iron in here so I kind of can't do the ironing part but I'm just going to smooth it and pull at the same time. <laughs> Diane says, where on earth would you put a monster machine like that? Um, those huh. are in like big buildings. It's an industrial machine is what big it is. Yeah, thing. like warehouses or whatever. But yeah, I've seen one on a video on YouTube. It's actually in someone's garage. A big garage at that. Well, we have a guy down the street that has a car lift in his garage where he keeps a car under and a car above. And this side also has this. She's really got a... I need the iron. Okay. The big one? Yeah. This is way too much. The big beast? Yeah. Alright, I gotta run some steam through this and shrink it down because uh, she's got some really bad waving borders. So you guys are gonna get to see that firsthand. It's not, it's not anybody's fault. It's just what happens. This is a mixture of... Quilting cotton and batik, so the quilting cotton has a little bit more stretch than the batik, so it ended up waving out the border. Do you want me to do it since you rested back? No, I got it. Okay. I'm just going to press it out first, and then, um, so you guys, I don't know how well you can see this, but I got some waving going on, and if I was to straighten this out even more, look at how bad that is right there. So you can see, I can literally stick my hand, so I'm going to... Flatten this out. Marla worked on an industrial juki for year, for work years ago. She sewed vinyl binding on carpet floor mats for GM and Ford. Oh, oh that's awesome. Interesting. Okay, keep talking whatever you're saying. All right, so I'm going to take the iron and I'm going to go over this. I'm going to have my machine base kind of out of the way. So I'm going to move it to where you guys can kind of see what I'm doing here. As soon as my iron is ready to start making steaming sounds. Hi, I'm Kathy. just using the big one that has the steamer. Because I want the, I want the steam to push its way through the top and shrink all this fabric back down to its original size. And if Kathy I have to, I'll starch Texas. it. Who? Kathy says hi. From Hello. The iron is not fully on yet, and I'm using the corded iron, but this one has continuous steam and it's plugged in, so it kind of helps a little bit more. It's just on the heavy side, especially for being on a long, you know, working on the long arm. Do you want me to hold it? No, I got it. Okay. I'm just waiting for it to do its second beep. 
And then I just have a half a row and then a full row left to do. I'm going to do the half a row first. That way everything blends and then the rest. Because I want everything to... I want the quilting to nest up nicely. So it looks like 70 inches in length pass-wise has what? What did I do? Six passes already? I don't do it Five now. passes? I think this is past six. Is always got a half left and not a full. <laughs> if it would have been like 70 or 80 inches, it would have been a full. Steamy? <laughs> no, this is that new one. We that a new reliable. Ones? It doesn't have a um. Big it doesn't have a name yet. All right, so I'm just gonna. I'm not pushing down. I'm just letting the steam penetrate through the fabric. So you can see it's shriveling it all back down and eliminating the fold and crease and that and the wavy border. So now I got to take my way down the quilt, which you guys cannot see, but I'm going to finish up yeah, away from the camera. I'm just ironing it all out so it stays nice and flat the rest of the way. And I'll go to the other side real quick too. That you can't see, but I showed you it's got a little bit of um, bowing happening and puckering. Just iron it while it's on the frame. Letting oh my that God. steam go through. Listen to this, honey. Marla sewed about 900 front floor mats in eight hours, or 1,500 rear floor mats in eight hours. What? She loved the Juki machine. Wow. That's amazing. Now that's a speed demon, man. Imagine if you had that. You yeah, that a, kind of machine. Yes. You'd be doing a zillion quilts a day. Yep. I don't think my hands can put fabric together as fast, though, as the machine would quilt. All right, so all of my wrinkles and puckers are now gone. And I'm going to baste that side real quick. Uh-oh, I'm okay. I don't want to hit it and then burn anybody or myself. All right, so I'm not going to move or touch anything. I'm just going to go ahead and baste this now. I'm going to quilt my half a row. Oh, come on. <laughs> Donna says you learn something new every day. I did not know you could do that. Thank oh, yes. Me. Yes, you can iron it while it's on the frame. And I got everything nice and flat. And now I, I don't really have to worry anything. about the puckers. So you can see it's got a little bit, but it's it's definitely flat. And it just won't be hugely tight, that's all. And when I go to do the basting across the bottom, it's going to pucker. But I can't... Um, do anything about that just yet and we unplug the iron so I don't burn myself but it's nice and straight for now and we'll see what happens after I quilt my half a row here that's why you guys see me run my fingers along like this probably oops and the reason why I trim my threads usually right away, because I don't know if you guys saw that, but I accidentally, accidentally ran it over with my wheel, so it yanked on it. All right, we're going to switch this to precision. I'm going to quilt half a row, so I'm going to go up, down, up, down, just back and forth from one side to the other, but I'm going to leave it to where I can still... Um a whole row as my finish. hard to hear me over my um, thing. My 
my face is right over the microphone, but Scott's is not. She says, oh my, that would make me dizzy. my conversation and fit what were we talking about uh, what were you talking about i don't remember oh well i'm gonna go back the other way <laughs> all right so i'm going back the other way now that way i can have this whole quilt done in one video oh maybe about us having family okay about us having family and friends in Apple Valley. oh yeah they're predictable yeah yeah that's what their conversation was because i typed that to her it wasn't what you were talking about, it was what I think. Sorry. I figured it out, Bella. Don't you worry, Bella. I'm a little slow at times. Oh, I knew it was running low when I was on the other side. That's right. Della was one of the fans that came to Vegas to meet Becca and Tiff. Yeah. All right, I'm going to put another bobbin in real quick. Don't oh, pull on okay. anything while it's right here because I don't want it's, it to shift. It's, it's not pull. It's a, it's a, just a okay. top thread. I was trying to That's take right. it off. Thank you. I'm trying to help you out. So you don't right. have to grab all the threads. So I'm going to throw a bobbin in here. kind of seems loose. Good night, Diane. Oh, no, it's good. Perfect. Bella, did you guys have fun in Vegas? Jeff did. She enjoyed herself immensely. Alright, I'm going to pop my bobbin in. And because I'm using polyester thread, I don't even need to go and clean under there. I'm going to start my stitching about right here. That locks that stiff. Some people tie it. I've seen a lot of long arm quilters go back and they like tie a knot. You know, they like tie the two threads. I don't even want to bother with that. I just go ahead of the stitches and right on top of the original stitches and then just tack it down. And then it should be good. I've never had anybody say it's ever came apart even after washing, so. <clears throat> All right, where was I? pass and then I should be done but I gotta baste the whole entire um, bottom of the quilt down and see if I don't if I have to iron it again or not because I'm at the bottom border now oh hey that's my job Stop. I didn't know you were ready for that oh yeah go back in go away I'll do it. All right, so you guys can see it's a nice wide half a row because I want it to end on a full row, but nobody is ever going to know the difference unless you're me, the quilter, who did it. Picky. Okay, hold on, picky. stop right there and okay, perfect, right there. 
They're good? Yep. All right, you can see right here, I'm starting to just, even by rolling it like this, that I'm starting to have a little bit of puckering. I did go as close as I could to it with the iron. Do you want this one all the way down here? Because this is where you stop. Yes. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to base right here at the end first on the left hand, or the right hand side. I'm going to tack this side down first. Bella says she's so happy that you're healing well and back to work. And then I'm going to give it a little bit of a tug and go this way, just a little bit, keeping my corner square before I actually, I'm actually going to tie this side off and then go to the other side and make my way down the whole entire thing. And you're going to ask me why. Well, I don't actually want it to shift in this direction. So that is why I will base from the other side to this side because only one side was basted to start and I need both sides basted. So I do just a little bit on that one side and then this side should, if it's straight, should meet right up to it. It's kind of like a keep it from shifting type based down on that side. So I'm going to just move this or else it's going to, all this thread ends up under that wheel. It always does every time. So I'm going to nicely hold this down. And now I'm going to just give it a little tiny tug and push my machine stitching this way. The same way I do it every time, as long as it stays in a, as best of a straight line as possible. Ooh. You don't have to say more. I already know what's going on. That way, all the fans don't know what we talk about. Okay, a little bit more. How are you doing, Teresa, with uh, is your uh, flare over? Right. I went over that seam twice so it doesn't pop it open because every once in a while, border seams can pop open. And it just is a hassle, so. Teresa's buffing and shit. She's the snow every single day going to day every winter. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably uh, what put her into a, a flare, just shoveling snow. And you can see I am pushing down on, on this side of my throat. Like, the other side of this is my throat. And it keeps it nice and um, tight the rest of the way down. Oops, my basting went a little tall right there, but that's okay. That can be picked out. Now, see, no puckering on my way. So everything meets right up, and that's what I was looking for. Now I'm going to base the actual edge. Those other stitches will get popped out for when she binds it. Sometimes they just end up too far because I do push the machine with my chest. Here we go. I'm going to put it back in precision mode and where this is the last pass and then I can take it off and show you guys all in one video. Pretty cool, huh? about um, when my clients come to me is they give me full range to do what I want. I gotta admit, at first I thought you were making some sort of like uh, test design, but once you went back over it, it looks awesome. Yeah, it's 
it'll fall over. She'll probably wash it before she gets it. She's got some doggy hair on this like great. For the ribbon? I have no idea. Have, have you, you ever, ever done, done three lines of stitching or do you just do two? Does oh, you, you mean for my basting? Usually two. Sometimes I, I can get away with just one um, pass on the basting, but some quilts that move or shift too much, I do two. Just to keep it from shifting or adjusting again. Yep, that's what she was talking about. Now back the other way, and then I will be done. Oh no, she is saying for the ribbon. Maybe you ever go with two layers on the ribbon? Instead? No, I think Three one looks more ribbony. Well, I took it as in two was supposed to be the ribbon twisting and turning, both yeah. sides of the ribbon. If you do three lines, I wouldn't know what the third line would be. In the ribbon. to do something like that it would be practice on something else not on a client's quilt I'll do what I've done before and know how to do on client client quilts before I play around unless they tell me here just play on this here and you can keep it <laughs> it's rare rare as in has only happened one time where they said here it's yours play with the top but it was crafty and I threw it away I actually have another one from another person that I haven't quilted yet.
Speedy gets Alex is soon done, and then Marla says, man, she don't let off that gas pedal for nothing. <laughs> no, if I continuously go, then I don't get myself lost or out of order or anything like that. All right, so I'm going to pull you guys off the mountain. I'm going to pass you to Scott, who's going to sit and hold the camera sitting in the chair. Just pop them. That's all you need to do. I'll do the rest because I, I wanted to show how much was left on him. Did you crawl? Okay. I know what I'm doing. All right, here Teresa we go. Teresa says you won. <laughs> you won. So you guys could see this is all batting that's left over. So I'm going to chop all that off. And then you can see it's rolled up on the backing fabric still. I had everything shifted that way. So here's a nice big chunk of batting on this side as well if she wants to use it for other things. So here you go. Just kind of try to sit still right here. I'm gonna cut off. I ain't gonna run off. Batting now while I'm right here. How many bobbins did it take, Teresa asked? Uh, four, five, four. Yeah, four. Uh, I think I'm going to stand, actually, instead of sitting. That way they can see the top of it. So I'm just cutting this excess batting away real quick. That way it doesn't have to be done by my client later and hang over when I take the final photos. I have before cut the quilt off the frame this way as well because I told her I'm not trimming yet. So, and usually I trim this client's quilts for her. I told you guys I'd give you a sneak peek of the monster hiding in his spot. So here's a nice good chunk of batting. This is there he is. Like He's hidden. Big quilt. So all I do is yank on that, find my pins, pluck them all out. Teresa says big quilt, love the colors. Yes, it's beautiful. And I'll show you guys. We have daylight bulbs in here now, so I could actually hold the light or hold the quilt over on this side of the frame and it should be pretty good to see. Yeah, it looks pretty nice and bright in here. I don't know how well they're seeing, but it does look pretty good in here. I'm gonna close up on the beast. He's in hibernation mode now. No, that he annoyed everyone. Okay, she's ready. She's ready. Here it comes. And if you want to, Scotty, while it's hooked right here, you can show what it looks like. I am, aren't I? How am I not? Come up close to see the quilting more. Oh, is that That's what you meant? Yeah. I thought you meant show the whole quilt. Do you want me to hold that and you hold the camera? Would no, that be easier? Fine. Well, it sounds like you're struggling. No, I'm going to let go in a second. Okay. They can see it. Okay, it's I'm showing it up. Okay, let go. Let it go. Whee! All right, now I'm going to unpin the top. Vicky says pretty. Diane says looking, or I mean Kim says looking good. Oh, I can't read names today for the life of me. <laughs> Jim says, don't wake him, he'll be sorry. <laughs> so, in total... Donna says, that's so pretty. How many, um... Hi, Cheryl. How many Cheryl stitches? Cheryl says, oh, gorgeous. Hi, Tiff and everyone. Hello. I'll tell you how many stitches are in the quilt. It's Like I said, this is barely any quilting. So this is probably going to be... The amount of stitches that are in here is going to be like what's in a baby quilt, honestly. Um, Everybody's saying beautiful and very nice and great job. Poke at me. Goodness, you get poked so much. She just ordered new needles too, off wish. Because I needed more butterflies. Yep, so I now she has a plethora of butterflies. I was breaking so many heads. And a little plastic butterfly likes to break off. 
I'm loosening it a little because the too tight with one hand is actually pulling on the backing fabric. So. Heather, thanks to you for showing her a new type of quilting to try oh, yeah. on her next this, quilt. This is so e This is the easiest you could ever possibly do. And since this is me, I'm going to take my book with me to write down. She's jumping around under the machine here, guys. Goodness, a little Miss Acrobat. I'm going to write down today's date, which is 4... 13, I do believe. 13, 21... And this quilt right here, Scotty will show it, has... I've shown it many oh, times. You, to 46 minutes, I can tell you that. 46 minutes of quilting, but now i got to go to the rear screen because my top screen froze. Well, if we don't have any sort of technical difficulty, then All it right. just wouldn't uh, be a normal day in our life. 68,402 stitches. 68,402 stitches is what this took on here. Well, thank you, Emily. Emily says you're such a fast stitcher. Good job. And it is client blue, black, and gray. Della says wow. And white square. How's your little young and doing, Emily? Sorry, it takes me longer to write right now because of my hand. Writing is still one thing that's kind of funky. Funky. All right. Do you want to take this thing now? Yeah, and you can hold this up. Yes, I'd rather do that. Okay. Just don't put me in the camera. You I'm not. It? Just hold the whole thing up. I, can you step in? Come over here into the light of the room. Left or right? To your right. right. Or left. Left, 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 left. I'm sorry, you're facing the wrong way. Keep going. Keep going. All right. And there it is. So you can see it's not completely heavily quilted. It looks great. And then upon further examination, the whole entire thing is quilted. It looks like ribbons. Did Emily comment back yet? I have no idea because I don't see the comments. Okay, well then go look at the tablet laying right next to you. And then the backing fabric is, just hold that like that right here, is this right here. But you can't even see the stitching. Oh, you can because of the lighting. So there's the stitching on the back. But if I go close, it's little plus signs or X's. X's. X's, there we go. So there that is it. All done. Client quilt done. Okay, you can hold it down now. I right, turn the camera around. All right. Oh. Now for sit down and chat for a second time. Anyway, so I did that. It's done. Complete. All done. <laughs> Don't you guys love it when I can quilt the whole quilt in one video? Jim says think about doing that by hand. It would take forever to do that many stitches. 68,402 stitches? Yeah, that Michelle would take a lot. That includes the stitches that are around in the basting, but the basting is a stitch every half inch, so technically it's like barely anything. It's probably the 402 part. <laughs> so it's got 68,000 stitches in it, you know? Hi, Judy. Judy just got home and caught the end. She said oh. she's glad. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys could all join me. Uh, does anyone have any questions, comments, concerns? What do you mean you have a good new English? Judy, but okay. Oh, she probably meant something else. Um, my hand is actually kind of hurting uh, on the long side right here, but that's just because I held the handle and worked pretty hard pretty quick, but I'm pretty confident now that I can move on from easy um, quilting back to my normal everyday thing. I'm not sure about ruler work just yet because that requires a lot of stop, start, and movement. But other than that, I'm pretty confident I can go back into attempting like feathers and, you know, fancy stuff. So, oh, okay. 
Anyways, thank you guys for hanging out with me. I hope I saved some money for those of you who are probably trying to or not trying to shop tonight. Um, and um, thank you. And if you subscribe down there, you won't you won't hate it. I have okay videos. It just you know, my internet sucks. <laughs> but don't forget to like, share with your quilty friends, as well as comment if you've watches watched this video as a replay. So yeah, all right. Bye, everybody. Take care. Good night. Good night.